Hey guys and gals, it's Luthien, and along with Emrys, we are Girls with Sabres. Girls with Sabres continues to battle technical difficulties. Please pardon the sound blips and inconsistencies. Thank you so much for your patience and understanding. We struggle on and we promise one day <laughs> it'll all sound crystal clear. <laughs> we hope you enjoy. Peace, love, and Raylo. So friends, what we're going to do today is we're going to go back to the roomy poem of a great wagon. Um, The reason that this is so significant is many, many moons ago, uh, someone posted a leak photo of the mood board of the Rise of Skywalker. And if you are not familiar with a mood board, a mood board is a collection of quotes and colors and images and things of that nature to kind of give the storytellers the mood, the story, um, the inspiration of the story that they wanted to tell. Well, in the middle, which is the central focus of that mood board, is a quote from the Rumi poem, A Great Wagon. And that quote, this poem, The Great Wagon by Rumi, screams Raylo. Mm -hmm. And we still believe it has ever been as relevant because some makers of the film are still tweeting this line. This is still important. And in some ways, The Rise of Skywalker still fulfilled it. In some ways, it can be another piece of evidence that Ben Solo can return in some capacity. Really reminds me of Maz, where I felt like they they used Maz as Rumi's mouthpiece. I wish we would have heard, heard and seen more of her in The Rise of Skywalker. The belonging you seek is not behind you, it is ahead. I love that because you could interject that line into this Rumi poem and it would make sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Maz is the oracle. And she's also inspired by J.J. Abrams' teacher. So Rumi was a 13th century Persian poet, scholar, theologian, mystic. Um, His influence transcended national borders and ethnic divisions. His poems have been widely translated into many of the world's languages and transposed into various formats. He has been described as the most popular poet and the best-selling poet in the United States. Uh, Us uh, Americans love Rumi. (laughs) Well, I mean, all over the world. All over the world he is. He is revered, but... Now, us Americans are like, oh, my God, I got to post this on my fridge. (laughs) It's so wonderful to me that a 13th century poet's words are so powerful and poignant that that shows the power of when something is well written. It doesn't matter what time period it was written in. It it means that it is universally powerful. You, You read something like The Great Wagon, which we're about to read again and analyze it and we think these words are are hitting us right now to our heart to our core there's something so profoundly human about them so i'm going to start from the very beginning of the poem and we're just going to work our way down let's do it yeah. when i see your face the stones start spinning you appear all studying wanders I lose my place. Water turns pearly. Fire dies down and doesn't destroy. In your presence, I don't want what I thought I wanted. Those three little hanging lamps. And and this all really references the first time they met. Up until The Last Jedi, I feel, even in the interrogation scene, You know, in your presence, I don't want what I thought I wanted. You you see that between both of them, Uh, even even through The Rise of Skywalker, but definitely through The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. There, especially Ben, he's very interested in Rey 
very inquisitive in the interrogation scene. He takes his mask off and she starts like, my God, you're not, your face isn't distorted. Like you're, you're not who I thought you would be under that thing. So even from the very beginning, this, this poem really speaks to their relationship in general. Would you agree? Definitely. Especially the scene in the interrogation scene where both of them realize that there is a spark between of them. Like, he says, don't worry, I, I feel it too. And, of course, we know that that was the force, the waking of the force that they felt run through them. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I think that was might have been a pause where Ben realized... I feel the light side calling me and he realized it was the light of Ray calling Mm -hmm. him. So he was doubting at that moment, doubting of whether or not the dark side path is the path that he should go on because Mm -hmm. of this light that was calling him, this light of Ray. Inside your face, the ancient manuscripts seem like rusty mirrors. You breathe. New shapes appear. And the music of a desire as widespread as spring begins to move like a great wagon. Drive slowly. Some of us walking alongside are lame. You have that imagery of the dawn and spring in the Vanity Fair cover, those pastel colors. And you also have... um, spring in some of the language and the the translations of the rise of skywalker some of it instead of of the uh, rise of skywalker it was the dawn of skywalker or it was the resurrection of skywalker so all of those words like rise dawn resurrection really have the idea of the seasons turning today like every other day We wake up empty and frightened. Don't open the door to the study and begin reading. Take down a musical instrument. Let the beauty we love be what we do. There are hundreds of ways to kneel and kiss the ground. I love that. Let the beauty we love be what we do. Hi, Rose. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Isn't that the truth? Yeah. And just the fact that you have these ancient texts, you have these texts that um, Ray was trying to decipher, you have these these scriptures that she's still trying to ponder and think through. And, well, there needs to be time for studying and truth finding. And there also needs to be time for breathing in and taking in the beauty of what's going around you. It's, it's this, you know, true worship, true living is both in the spirit and the truth. It's in, it's in beauty and in truth. And that way we have a balanced education. So here we go. <laughs> the big one. The big yep. one. <laughs> big one. Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing. There is a field. I'll meet you there. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. Ideas, language, even the phrase each other doesn't make any sense. I love it. That that was the, the part that was on the mood board. And I love out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing. There is a field. I'll meet you there. The wrongdoing and rightdoing is the Sith and the Jedi. Beyond the ideas of the Sith, beyond the ideas of the Jedi, there is a field and we will meet there. Mm-hmm. We'll meet in the Force, our community on Twitter. I can't remember your name. I, I know that your username is something Galatians. We were discussing this world between the worlds theory and she talked about how she believed that field was actually the Force force split itself in two just like uh those creatures in the dark crystal they split themselves in two so you have two halves of what should be unified well until ben and ray are unified the two become one they're not where the force wants them to be they're not in that prime jedi mosaic 
they are supposed to meet right in the middle. So they need to meet in the middle of the force. I love the next part. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about ideas, language, even the phrase each other doesn't make any sense. It's, it is the height of love and adoration. It is, it is Han and Leia on Endor on this lush green planet. It's Anakin and Padme in the, in the, in the grassy plains of Naboo. I mean, Mm -hmm. it is, it is, it transcends it is and and they're the dyad which which is seriously the dyad is ideas language even the phrase each other doesn't make any sense because each other the dyad transcends all of that yep. so it's, it's anakin and padme it's han and leia but it it's it transcends it's, it's even more than those loves it, it also speaks of that greek understanding of the two souls yes. the the soul once being one body there wasn't a male or female in his dialogue the symposium plato has aristophanes present a story about soulmates aristophanes states that humans originally had four arms four legs and a single head made of two faces it is said that humans had great strength at the time and threatened to conquer the gods The gods were then faced with the prospect of destroying the humans with lightning as they had done with the titans, but then they would lose the tributes given to the gods by humans. Zeus developed a creative solution by splitting humans in half as punishment for humanity's pride and doubling the number of humans who would give tribute to the gods. These split humans were in utter misery to the point where they would not eat and would perish. So Apollo had sewn them up and reconstituted their bodies with the navel being the only remnant harking back to their original form. Each human would forever long for his or her other half. It is said that when the two find each other, there is an unspoken understanding of one another, that they feel unified and would lie with each other in unity and would know no greater joy than that. And that is in the simplest terms, that's what a dyad is. to becoming one that's why um consummation of love that marriage language is used in a a wedding ceremony is to become one because when you consummate that relationship that is exactly what is going on according to that greek understanding that love making is two people becoming one and we're going to go into that a little bit later on it certainly is like um the idea of twin flame and we had a lot of people reference that in our comments in our last couple live streams and our in our videos and I just want to acknowledge that right now yes without getting into a whole lot of detail the idea of the twin flame is very much like um, the dyad where twin flames don't have to be male or female even though a lot of times they are but it's just two souls that um make one soul it's your soul's calling out for its other half and and gender is irrelevant even though uh, a lot of times twin flames yes are, are, are a man and a woman but it it's cosmic it's divine it transcends so it's very much like the dyad principle even in twin flame ideology like say like twin flame is just the name that was kind of came about like it, it's not really even twins like it transcends its own given name this this roomy poem is the dyad this roomy poem is twin flame theory so i'm gonna continue the breeze at dawn has secrets to tell you don't go back to sleep you must ask for what you really want don't go back to sleep people are going back and forth across the door sill where the two worlds touch (laughs) The door is round and open. Don't go back to sleep. Oh my gosh, this excites me so much. (laughs) Well, hello world between worlds. The door is round and open and people are going back and forth across the door sill where the two worlds touch. Hello. Hello. (laughs) Yeah, we we did a reading of this and we're going to tell you to go watch it because we we, we did... Yes, we did a video essay of this. And when we were, when I was editing that, 
we thought world between worlds and so if you look at the footage i took the footage right from rebels what what does the doorway look like when ezra walks in through the world between worlds it's it's a round door it's a round door all of those portals to different periods of time are round and open like the the door and if you think of also the will of time if you think of that and the whole celtic understanding of there are certain times and certain portals and if you go in those locations where the two worlds where meaning like two parallel universes touch you can slip between that time and space and go into another period of time and usually that is in daylight or in the magic hour at three o'clock what is he saying the breeze at dawn has secrets to tell you you know you have those whispers on the winds you have those flickers of the what are those called the wheels of the wisp (laughs) or i think this stanza in particular says that It could be that the force or the force ghosts themselves, those people who whisper, those secrets, she's already communing with the other, the other force ghosts, be with me, they might be able to tell her how to get Ben Solo back, and perhaps he's stuck on bridge between the world between worlds. Well, it's also, don't go back to sleep, don't go back to sleep, it says it three or four times here where there's been an awakening have you felt it i mean she was awakened in the force and now there's this profound connection between them it it could be ben calling out to her through the world between worlds don't go back to sleep don't go back to sleep find me find me you can find me don't lose hope don't fall back to to your old ways you know i will i am here um, but don't go back to sleep is is referencing the awakening in the force. You also have the awakening of or the that metaphor of love, sleeping in beauty and snow white where where she goes to sleep. she it's not a true death, but it's a sleep like death. Mm-hmm. So the princess has to lay dormant until she is ready and he is ready to wake her up and live in that full romance Uh, put a pin in that whole going to sleep going to sleep until love finds you and you're ready for it put a pin in that and then we'll we'll go back to it no I'm saying that to to everyone (laughs) oh okay never mind (laughs) so go ahead who are you talking to okay this this part really chokes me up. <laughs> I would love to kiss you. The price of kissing is your life. <sighs> so that was that was kind of fulfilled, wasn't it? <laughs> now my loving is running toward my life shouting, "What a bargain!" Let's buy it. Daylight full of small dancing particles and the one great turning. Our souls are dancing with you. Without feet, they dance. Can you see them when I whisper in your ear? I feel that that's all the, the, the thousand generations live in you now. I feel that they are all the souls that are dancing with Ben and Ray, or or Ray, you know, we saw, we heard the Force Ghost talking to her, but they're without feet, obviously, because they are not, they are not alive. I mean, they're living within the Force, but they are not, they are not flesh and blood. You also have the imagery in in Dante's Paradise. You have that imagery of once they get to Empyrean which is the very top of that pyramid. The Empyrean light is like where, where the Holy of Holies is, where God is. And God in in paradise is like this big, huge beaming of light where Mm -hmm. you feel love at its most 
transcendent, you know, like, because that's being in the presence of God. And Dante says that at that very top, you see all of the saints just dancing yeah. and whining around that light. And he has never felt, it's like love that is higher than any other love. Mm-hmm. And he's right there with Beatrice. But of course, these people are not flesh and blood. They're spirits. They've transcended. Right. Like, you know, it's very much like what Yodas of the Yodas, what Yoda says, you know, <laughs> what is, what is that luminous beings we are? What is that exact quote? Luminous beings are we, not this crude matter. Right. I mean, that's exactly what it is because when you are in this, this Empyrean and that you're in that Empyrean at the very top of that triangle, you are that luminous being mere matter matters of like eating and drinking and sleeping and things that we need to do like you've risen above it because love is life now for you but Dante is right by his beloved Beatrice he's made it he's made mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. I I think that phrase now my loving is running toward my life shouting what a bargain let's buy it I cannot help but think of when you see Ben climbing out of that crevice he can barely walk but he is running right to Ray like yes. he's using well, that whole walk. time the minute yes. he gets to Exegol he is running towards Ray yeah even though he's really he, running towards her and what the does danger. he say all he's got is the force and a blaster like he doesn't <laughs> even have he doesn't even have a lightsaber it's like, dude is ready. <laughs> it's like, I don't care. I don't care yep. what this will cost me. I mean, what did yep. he say to Han? He said, I know what I need to do, but I don't have the strength to do it. And I'm, I'm not talking about just the first time he said that to Han, right. but I'm talking about when he said that to Han on the Death Star. I have no doubt he knew right then and there, I've got to meet Rey at Exegol, and I've got to help her take Sidious down. Um uh, threw that saber into the ocean and probably said to himself, I have the strength to do it. And then when he saw Ray lying there and cradled her, he said, I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. And he goes, I do have the strength. And he did it. And as much as I, oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Is, and I'm, you're probably going to say the exact same thing. It's not romantic, but it is heartbreakingly beautiful that he found the strength to go to her, to run to her, to help her, to heal her. And for well, him, it was a bargain that he was willing to make. Exactly. That's what I was about to say. Mm-hmm. Like the price of kissing is your life. Sure. Yes. What a bargain. Let's take it. And I'm not sure again, we're not trying to romanticize it. We hate no. it. But in Ben's <laughs> in Ben's mind, um, if I can save Ray, then that's a bargain for me. Yes. Yep. I I'm mean, willing to pay that price. I'm willing to pay that price. Um mm-hmm that's a bargain to me because that that shows how much he He loved loved her her. yeah Mm -hmm. and it's it's also looking at things from a certain point of view we're being obi-wan kenobi here (laughs) okay they try to say what you are spiritual or sexual they wonder about solomon and all his wives so Rumi is referencing a book of the Bible called the Song of Songs. And the Song of Songs is attributed to King Solomon, although people are not sure if he wrote it or not. There's still debate about that. But the Song of Songs is basically about the king getting married to his bride. And they are writing actually love poetry and love lines to one another waiting for their honeymoon waiting for the night of their consummation 
the language suggests that it 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 was written around the fourth or third century of BCE. So this predates Rumi by centuries. So Song of Songs is in the Old Testament. Um, and because it's in the Old Testament, it's not just read and studied by Christians, people who follow the faith of Islam, as well as people who follow the Judaic faith, read and study the book of, of Song of Songs, or also called the Song of Solomon. So Rumi, who followed faith of Islam, is very familiar with the Song of Songs, and you could hear that in the Greg Wagon. And we will pull from his poem, The Great Wagon, and start pulling from the Song of Songs, apply them to the rise of Skywalker, because there's also other verses that have uncanny allusions in the rise of Skywalker. The Song of Songs is actually extremely romantic and very, um, how can I say, sexually charged. Because it's basically about a bride and a groom waiting for their honeymoon, waiting for their wedding night. And they're talking about to each other about how exciting that moment will be. So you have that. They wonder about Solomon and all his wives. Yes, Solomon had many wives. But in that Song of Songs, you really, you really get to hear how Solomon loved this bride. When we hear that... There's that whole discussion of how J.J. Abrams said, well, they are more than brother and sister. So that was the part that was taken out of context. But when you're listening to his answer, he says they are more than brother and sister. They are more than uh, romantic or, you know, into each other. So what he's saying is that this dyad, this relationship transcends and you have that in the Song of Songs. You have um, Solomon calling, or the king, the prince, calling um, her, my sister, my bride. And you have the bride calling the king, my brother, my husband. And people are like, what? Is Solomon married? <laughs> His sibling? Well, no, it's because in that time period, they would call each other that because that was a longing they had to be a family. And you also had, you made, Luthien, you had this really good point that in the context of faith. Well, right. In the eyes of God, we are all his children. So we are all brothers and sisters. And that's in a more spiritual way. So, you know, brothers and sisters in Christ, you hear that in Christianity all the time um you know even even m says amen sister friend to me <laughs> all the time but but you 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 talk you know even with henry v like he who fights with me today shall be my brother right. i mean so you have that uh familial language even not in in religious or spiritual context, you have that in brothers in arms in the military and, you know, in day to day life, like, you know, uh, girls who get together, like, Oh, they're my sisters. They're my friends. I mean, so it's the same, it's the same thing, but what JJ said right there is this Rumi poem. It is the song of Solomon. It is, they are as much of a brother sister relationship as they are a romantic one, which means they are hitting every aspect of a relationship and more. It is that profound. It is that special. It is that unique. In the body of the world, they say there is a soul and you are that. But we have ways within each other that will never be said by anyone. That's so beautiful. In the body of the world, they say, there's a soul and you are that, meaning you are my world and you are my soul. You are everything to me in this world and beyond. And you, you are the center. That's one of the highest compliments in this poem. It's like, you are my beating heart. Like, you are the heart of this world for me. Like, you're my whole world and the heart within it. Come to the orchard in spring. There is light and wine and sweethearts in the pomegranate flowers. So you can see a really direct parallel 
between this verse in the great wagon to this verse in the song of songs come my beloved let us go into the field let us lodge in the villages let's go early up to the vineyards let's see whether the vine has budded its blossom is open and the pomegranates are in flower there i will give you my love come the orchard in spring there is light and wine and sweethearts in the pomegranate flowers <laughs> yeah and where are they meeting in a, uh, in a freaking field <laughs> there is a field i'll meet you there come yeah. my beloved let us go out into the field don't tell me <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that Ruby didn't <laughs> pull from um, pull from this book of the Bible. It's just amazing. Yeah. It also talks about in Song of Songs in that language of love. His left hand would be under my head. His right hand would embrace me. Was his left hand under her head and his right hand embracing her? I think it was. His left hand was behind her head and his right hand healed her. And then when they kissed each other, his right hand went behind her back and embraced her. And the the next line, the bride says, I adjure you, daughters of Jerusalem, that you not stir up or waken love until it so desires. And that's what she's saying. She's saying, you need to go to sleep <laughs> until love wakes you up. Because once yeah. love wakes you up, it's going to prevail. You have Rumi talking about don't go back to sleep. Well, in the Song of Songs, it says, do not awaken love until it so desires. Well, both of them have awakened to love in each other. They have been both yeah. awakened to the force as a dyad. You have Rumi talking about don't go back to sleep. There are doorways between worlds between worlds. And what can promote someone to go between those world between worlds? Love. Love is not under the barriers, under the chains of death. And this is what she goes on to say. She says, set me a seal on your heart as a seal on your arm. For love is as strong as death. Its flashes are flashes of fire, a very flame of Yahweh. Yahweh being God for those who don't. Yahweh. Many waters can't clench love, neither can floods drown it. She's saying, once you give your heart to that person, love is as strong as death. It cannot be quenched. The last lines here, if you do not come, these do not matter, which means none of this, none of this life, my life, if you don't reciprocate my love, none of this has meaning. None of these beautiful things matter to me anymore. But if you do come, these do not matter, which means you matter. Nothing else matters because I have you. Mm -hmm. And we are one and we transcend these earthly things. Luminous beings, are we? not this crude matter <laughs> yeah yeah so it's so beautiful I do think this poem was was met uh, throughout the sequel trilogy um, but I Emerus and I both believe that we're not done I feel People underestimated the power of Ben Solo. I would love it if he were trapped in the world between worlds, which would definitely play into uh, Dante's Inferno, where he's stuck in purgatory now and he must ascend. And I would love for him to re meet Ray on the other side of this. I think I think a lot of the fandom, even the the ones that proclaim that they're not really in it for for Ben and Ray like M you going to the theater on Thursday night before the Rise of Skywalker and you had your Raylo shirt on and and the guy says ugh Raylo and his friend looks he's like come on we're all trash like admit it <laughs> we're all trash <laughs> I love that there are people out there who just love the the love story and it's ugh. It's Aragorn and Arwen. It is Faramir and Eowyn. It, I mean, there are plenty of epics that 
guys love and there's a love story wrapped around in it you know it's I love it I love this poem I feel that it was that it was met but there is there is more out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing there's a field and I will meet you there she needs to find him and meet him there in the force again love is stronger than death true say that in the bible man <laughs> Yeah. Hello, this is Emrys, and with Luthien, thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and click on that little bell icon that will give you notifications every time we post a new one. And of course, like, comment, and do all those things. <laughs> Peace, love, and Raylo, guys. All magic comes with a prize. <laughs>